I don't think I've ever had to try so hard for a kilometre on a road bike in my life. We're like three miles an hour up there. Yeah. I think we've got 5k to go, Mark, until we get... Until we get back onto the main road. To the main road. It's absolutely brutal. I remember this is tough. Yeah. But, you know, memory speed. <laughs> we have just ticked past 100 miles for the day, which means we have just ticked past halfway around the NC500. That's true, 250 miles. Yeah. But uh, not that much time that, left to get back to Inverness. That is the heart locker, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, considering this is a three day challenge and it's 20 to five on day two and we're halfway. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> you said it's all downhill with a tailwind from here, I think. The north coast of Scotland is a beautiful, rugged wilderness that deserves to be on every cyclist's wish list of places to ride. And what better way to sample it could there be than by riding the North Coast 500, a route that starts and finishes in Inverness and then traces a sinuous line for 500 miles around the mountains and lochs of Scotland's north coast. It's an amazing adventure for intrepid cyclists. You could ride it over the course of a week or perhaps five 100 mile days, or if you get invited to ride it with the round the world record holder, Mark Beaumont, three. Yeah, three days. 500 miles in three days. For a slightly unhinged minority of you, that might actually not sound too bad. I mean, Mark's own record for the NC500 is just 38 hours straight. But for me though, three days with that kind of mileage is a step into the unknown. And while one night's accommodation is a nice hotel, the other night is a hedge. If uh, you can actually find any hedges on that exposed north coast. Right Mark, talk me through it. The plan is start from here, well pretty close Inverness Castle and head west. This is all farmland, it all starts to get really beautiful as you hit the sea locks on the west coast and this is the the bit that everyone talks about, the Biakinaba Apple Cross Pass. So that's like the highest pass, the longest climb in the UK. Yeah, it's uh, you know those like UK cycling best climbs. I think yeah. it's been number one forever. One of my favourite bits on the route is then coming up around Torridon. Yeah. Massive cliffs, you'll see it, it's beautiful. Uh, and then following the west coast around. So where we're trying to get to tomorrow night is here, Pool U. Yeah. Um, a, me a mellow 150 miles. 150 to, miles. To, to warm up. Great. <laughs> and then crack on up the west coast. Uh, what I've done with the route, rather than following the the traditional, the classic North Coast 500 route, I've um, I've deviated a little bit. Okay. Because there's some roads which the motorhomes and the cars typically don't go on because they're so small. Um, but I think they're going to be perfect for cycling. It does sound good. And then we should, by the end of day two, make it sort of halfway along the north coast of Scotland. And that's where we're looking for a hedge. Yeah. Uh, and it's, well, I mean, you joke, but it's so barren up there that there won't be many trees. If we find a hedge, we'll be doing well. I mean, <laughs> okay. it's properly windswept, empty. It depends how far along we make it, but from that point, you you can just about start to see views over to Orkney. Oh, wow. And so you kind of know you're on the edge of Scotland. Yeah, and then a casual 200 miles to finish. Yeah, so, I mean, this was your idea. <laughs> I'm gonna put this one back on you. Don't tell them that. <laughs> So we're going inland to begin with and then these beautiful little roads and then finishing off with a loop through what they call the Black Isle. Oh wow. Back into Inverness. That looks particularly cruel because we're within spitting <laughs> distance of Inverness Castle and then you've sent us off on another 20 miles. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's a 500 mile route, North Coast 500 and... Uh, You'd feel pretty cheated if you did the NC 480, yeah. wouldn't you? <laughs> so yeah. That was, that was my biggest worry with 
all the, like, the, my biggest worry was the, the around the world, because you can't go back and do a few miles. Imagine you finish like two miles short. You got to do the distance. That's a good point, actually. Well, we'll make sure we do the 500 miles. I cannot wait. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Genuinely cannot wait. If you want to see the full Mark Beaumont route, there is a link to the GCN Kamut profile in the description. From there, you can download the GPX file. Here we go then, nearly ready to roll out. The route is locked and loaded into my Wahoo up there. The screen is currently telling me that I've got 804.8 kilometers to go. So uh, I don't know to be looking at that particular screen very much, certainly for the next couple of days. Uh, now you notice that I'm not wearing my usual GCN cycling kit. I'm wearing Altura clothing instead. They've been a long time supporter of Mark's and they've extended that support for this trip as well. It's fair to say they've had to send quite a bit of stuff up to us, given that although the forecast is touch wood quite good for the next three days this far north at this time of year anything could happen in fact there were snowstorms just last week so it's fair to say I'm not packing light then lastly before we roll out uh, you'll see that I'm riding a 3T Exploro as well now we're currently in the middle of making a video about whether one bike can do it all and so it seems fair to use that same bike for bike packing as well as racing it on road and off right then let's do it well, it's early doors and uh, this is Inverness Castle, so the start of the North Coast 500 cycle route. And if all goes well, we'll be back here in three days. Yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed for that, Mark. I think this might be my uh, toughest challenge yet. Should we do it? Yeah, for sure. Right. Four and a half hours in. About halfway, aren't we? Just under. Half an hour, half, halfway through the day. I think so. I've got 113 k's on the clock. Yeah. So, so we'll just, I don't know, take a quick break and then uh, over the hill. Yeah. Probably not uh, Not too much food with that climate. No, as you say, let's, <laughs> let's do Mark Beaumont's schedule as opposed to Simon Richardson's schedule. Because <laughs> uh, mine seems to end up in trouble in darkness. Yeah. Well, we said we needed a Mark Beaumont style lunch stop and we did indeed get a Simon Richardson style lunch stop. So we're massively behind schedule. We're, it's two o'clock now and we know we've got about five hours riding still to go and we're at the base of this beast. Yeah, it's reputation goes before it. It's the Biakinaba, the Apple Cross Pass and it's, well, it's up, up, up from here. This is sea level and uh, the sun is shining. It's going to be a hot climb. Yeah, I have got my legs out, my overshoes off, so it can't be all bad, eh? We're about halfway up Biakinabar now, and it's got to be said, this is absolutely breathtaking. I mean, it's, it's a long old climb, isn't it? We've done a good few K, there's still a good few K to go, but I didn't think there were climbs like this in the British Isles. Amazing. It's pretty steady for this valley section, and at the top, it just steepens up around those switchbacks, and you could be anywhere in the Alps. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's just a landscape. It's bonkers, isn't it? And what a day for it. I wish I'd put a short sleeve jersey on it. <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to get the KOM today, mate. No. <laughs> no. I blame the filming. Yeah. Nothing to do with I know. our tempo and camping gear. <laughs>
We might have just done the longest climb in the British Isles, Mark, but this flat bit around the peninsula, which is actually not flat at all. Nobody talks about it. No, it's really taken out of my legs. All these little ramps that I'm getting excited and like trying to dance my way up like a bike packing Marco Pantani. And actually, I think I'm gonna come well unstuck in a minute. I know, we're gonna feel it tomorrow for sure. This was part of my training ride in the build up to the world. And the coastline of the UK or Britain was tougher than almost anywhere I can think of in the world. Just because of this, just constant. Yeah. I've got a lot to learn about ultra endurance riding, Mark, and I think one of them revolves around lunch. <laughs> So 200 k's under the belt, 40 k's to go. You can probably tell by this beautiful golden light that it's well into the evening, isn't it? And uh, I don't know about you, I'm feeling pretty tired now. That's been amazing, but tough. So can you perk me up, Mike? What have we got to look forward to now? Downhill, tailwind, all the way to pull you? Um, we've definitely done the tough stuff. Uh, it's, so it's, not, it's not flat, but we're back, up, we're, we're off the single track now. Okay. And we're kind of going due north now-ish. Oh, it's a beautiful stretch, it's all beautiful. I mean, that last bit by Torridon, I know you were looking forward to it, and it didn't disappoint. No, it didn't. My word, it didn't disappoint. Um, but I guess, yeah, off the single track, onto really busy roads. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fine. We've only got two days of this to go, and the last day is only an extra 50 miles. Let's just get in before we need to use lights. <laughs> See you in a bit. golden hour, huh? Oh yeah, look at that. First day. Wednesday night is Stovey's night. What's that, mate? Stovey's? Yeah, what's you'll, that? You'll enjoy Stovey's. Yeah? <laughs> uh, proper Scottish meal. Oh. There we go. 150 miles oh, in the bank. Pretty much on the button. Yeah. The sun has just set over that way, over the islands, and uh, yeah, what a beautiful first day. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I'm glad it's ended, if I'm honest, <laughs> but that was one of the best days riding that I've ever had. And I'm glad that uh, we're, we're not camping tonight, although it would be an epic night to camp. But I think it because it was quite a gritty first day, a meal in the bed won't hurt. There's a suggestion there that tomorrow's gonna be easier. I hope so, <laughs> I hope so. It's just as beautiful if that helps. Is it? That does help. Yeah. That does help. All right. right Stovies. Whatever they are, I'm going to eat them. <laughs> Given that we are camping wild tonight, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk you through the kit that I've got, just very briefly. There's a full video over on the tech channel as well. Now, back here, this is where I've got my sleeping bag, my bivy bag, and my mat. And then Aperture have sent this monster frame back here, which is wicked. So I've got a camel back in there, which is uh, upsetting some of the purists, I know but it's pretty good. Uh, and then I've also got tools, I've got riding clothes, and I've got some food in there. Then up top, I've got phone, charger, and a little bit more food. And then this one, the handlebar bag, uh, this is where I've got a warm jacket and my one pair of pants, uh, among a few other items of clothing. Um, now, this was hiding in my handlebar bag yesterday, but it uh, feels appropriate, seeing as we're camping out tonight, to, uh, to rock the dangle mug. Much to Mark's disgust. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Day two, we now have just 560 kilometers to go. As you can see, we're gonna to have to contend with, uh, with slightly worsened weather today. There's a gentle breeze as well as blazing sunshine. So uh, anyway, Mark, what is in store for us on the route? Right, so uh, crack on up the northwest of Scotland. Um, so through places like Alapool, Durness. So the top left corner, 
and uh, make it as far along the north coast of Scotland as we can. Last night we we gave it some good chat about an early start. Yeah. 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 No, this is this is my <laughs> bad influence. Uh, we're way later than we should do. Uh, by the way, I did have stovies last night, uh, which was not what I was expecting. It's like a stew, like a lamb and potato and carrot stew, but it was very good. Proper Scottish fare. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how it. Let's see how it actually Fuels performs you. for me today. Yeah, but anyway, there you go. Stovies was lovely. Right, shall we? Let's ride. Will I get your seal of approval, Mark? <laughs> We've been distracted. We're, we are chasing time here, but there's seals uh, sunning themselves on the beach down there in the rocks, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, we're, we're not allowed to stop for long lunch breaks, but we are allowed to stop for seal breaks. So. <laughs> there's, there's some swimming further out as well. You get quite a lot of dolphins around here as well. Awesome. Love it. I'm not going to lie, this morning, Mark, I was a little bit nervous about the fact that would today be able to match yesterday. And actually, I think it's even better. Well, I think when everyone talks about the North Coast 500, they get stuck in talking about the Bialik, the Apple Cross Pass. Yeah. But there's just so much more. This West Coast is just, it gets quieter and quieter. Yeah. You know, more and more beautiful. I love it up here. Cut! First one in half an hour. <laughs> Three days is punchy. There's been a few spots today where I just thought, you know what, wouldn't it be nice to just sit down and just chill out by a stream or a river or on a beach, sit and watch some seals maybe. And that is the trouble when you set yourself a target of a certain amount of mileage every day that involves nine and a half, ten hours in the saddle. It does leave a little bit less time for faffing. And so if you're going to do this as a holiday, you'd want to factor in some serious fat time, I think, wouldn't you? I think if you do it in three days, you've got to be willing for a bit of a suffer fest. Yeah. Yeah. Whose idea was it to do it in three days? Seriously. We made it to Ullapool, which is sadly only a third of the way through today. And I say sadly because it feels like those are 50 hard-earned miles. We've worked for it. We I, mean, I was kind of uh, thinking it was going to be quite cruisy, but it was properly lumpy and properly windy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got sore legs, and, uh, but not sore in a kind of fatigued way. I've got sore in like a, I've got a sore left Achilles and a sore right knee, which is a bit weird. But when thinking about it, we've done 15 hours of riding in the last day and a half which is uh, five times my normal <laughs> weekly average. So, uh, so yeah. And it's punchy. I mean, yeah. this morning's ride would be a good training ride, full stop. And it's our warm up for the day. <laughs> yeah, that said, we did have an amazing tailwind for the last 20 Ks or so, yeah, which, we, which boosted morale. We're just about to hit your stealth route as well, aren't you? The yeah. deviation from the traditional NC500. Yeah, so this was my idea to try and take us off. I mean, it's not exactly busy, but take us off the roads that the camper, I mean, it's van life up here, isn't it? I mean, we are passing, the, the only other people really on the route are, are people who are up here having an amazing time with their families and. Well, yeah, and if it turns out it's an absolute nightmare <laughs> of sweat and toil, we've got it on record that it was your idea. Yeah, no, this is absolutely on me. <laughs> yes. So that was 20 minutes, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Mark, fist bump for your extra route. That was unreal. It worked. That was amazing. I'm relieved because that was a step into the unknown. But uh, I'm not just saying this, but that's one of my favorite rides in the UK now. 
We're back onto the official North Coast 500 route, and this bit north of Loch Inver, in my humble opinion, is the real kick in the. It's pretty punchy. I call it the shark's tooth. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie. I've steered clear of looking at any kind of stats from the day. I'm just following the map screen. But I did have a quick peek. See, we've nearly got just 100 k's to go yeah. for the day. So once we've done that, and once we've gone through the shark's teeth, which sound great, then hopefully it'll just be a gentle cruise. And we've just heard that there's a dude somewhere ahead running. And, uh, you know, allegedly he's doing 50 to 70 miles a day. Yeah, so he's basically running at half our speed and covering half our distance, which, which is pretty impressive, isn't it? Oh, wow, look at this road. Ah! I'm in a dark place, a very dark place. These are more like dragon's teeth, not like shark's teeth. ever had to try so hard for a kilometre on a road bike in my life. We're like three miles an hour up there. Yeah. I think we've got 5k to go Mark until we get until we get back onto the main road. The main road. It's absolutely brutal. I remember this is tough. Yeah. But you know memory speed. <laughs> we have just ticked past 100 miles for the day which means we have just ticked past halfway around the NC500. That's true. 250 miles. Yeah. But uh, not that much time that, left to get back to Inverness. That is the heart locker, isn't it? Yeah. Well, oh. considering this is a three day challenge and it's 20 to 5 on day two and we're halfway. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> you said it's all downhill with a tailwind from here, I think. We're at the top of Scotland. We've reached Durness, which is uh, a pretty big milestone. Obviously a turning point. We're now heading across the top of Scotland. Yeah, this has been a tough old day. As you can see, the sun is setting behind us. We've got 12 kilometers left to go until our kind of milestone of 240K for the day, uh, which given that we're sleeping in a hedge is kind of an arbitrary figure, but both of us are fairly target oriented. So I don't think we're gonna stop until we get there. But anyway, we stopped at a shop back there. We've got our food for tonight. So uh, I'm just looking at every grassy verge going and thinking how nice it's gonna to be to curl up and go to sleep. <laughs> and, you guys, and you guys enjoy your hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the crew are gonna leave us to it in just a moment. Right then, we've got 245k on the clock. The last 5k was spent scoping a place to camp for the night. Mark thinks he's spotted it, so we're gonna go check it out. Should we do it? Uh. Right then, that is the crew now officially leaving us. There you go. See you later, dudes. It's been a long day, a long old day, but their hotel is keeping them some fish and chips back. Even though, what time is it now, mate? It's about quarter past nine. Right then, you better get some uh, tent up for Mark. 
Thanks, Josh, you bet. Right, Mark's on the spotlight now. How long is it going to take? Bring a big well, to be fair, you've carried it, and it hasn't seemed to have taken up very much room. No, it's the same size as a very big. Yes. That was a slightly sobering thing that Mark pointed out, was that my bivvy bag uh, effectively weighs exactly the same as his tent. So, anyway. Right, it is now officially the end of day two of the North Coast 500. It's 10 o'clock, I'm in my bivvy bag, ready to sleep. I had plenty to eat, plenty to drink. We're gonna need it, because uh, tomorrow is gonna be an epic day. The alarm is set for six. We're gonna roll out soon after, because uh, there's no easy way to do 200 miles. And uh, if the wind is in the same direction it was today, it's going to be considerably harder. So, uh, so yeah, keep your fingers crossed. Mark, how are you feeling, mate, about tomorrow? Tip top. Nah, it's another day. Let's get a good night's sleep. I think we'll try and roll out about six. All right, mate, sleep tight. Sleep tight. Over and out. Are there any wolves in Scotland? No. Bears? No. Okay. Right then, day three of the North Coast 500 starts here at quarter past six in the morning. Morning, mate. Good morning. <laughs> ah, let's do it. What time is it? A little bit of faffing done this morning. And I think it's about oh, 10 to 7. Man, we did some serious faffing. Alright, see you in a sec. Let's ride. Well, uh, we have just emerged from second breakfast. It's now nine in the morning, so we're pretty much on our normal schedule, but we have at least covered 28 kilometers already uh, in an astonishing one hour and 22 minutes. So we're flying this morning, it's fair to say, isn't it, Mark? It's not for a lack of trying. No, I mean, ge genuinely, we're quite, uh, I don't know, we're quite, quite up for it because we've got a massive ride today, but there's a few lumps and bumps. Well, I know for a fact it flattens out a little bit further east and uh, we just need the wind to behave itself so we can get back to Inverness before tomorrow. <laughs> Man, I'm so... I'm on my knees, but at least it's the last day. It hurts. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'll say still got me on the hills. Ooh. Hopefully it'll start flying out pretty soon. Feeling good, mate? Yeah. You still got the legs? Wow. Well, okay, I have at the minute. I was just thinking as I was pottering out there. No, I'm going to pay for that later. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> that's, anyway. that's the post breakfast energy kicking in. It's remarkable what uh, three cups of coffee and a couple of sausages will do. Yeah. So how many miles are you running each day? Well, the biggest day was 69. Wow. That was the first one and then it's been around 54, 55. You know, obviously given the <laughs> given the circumstances, west of Ross and um, the V lack and all that, I mean god yeah. It's absolutely phenomenal. My uh, I tell yeah, you. Yeah, I, I have got a bit of experience in running it. <laughs> so, I started, well I started running in 92 and I did ultras since 94. Where are you sleeping every night? You got, you got the van? Well actually, the crew stayed in the van, I sleep in the back of a car. So, in the back of a car, yes. Yeah, so. wow, so they've got, they've got the white um, VW van. Now I did start off in there, but it didn't really work out. So, 
best of luck for yeah, the uh, for the last little bit. We're gonna make the most of being on bikes on a descent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good on you. Right, cheers. All the best. Yeah, thank okay. you very much for talking to us. Yeah, and yeah, enjoy the rest of the road. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Thank what you. a dude. Right, let's do it. We're now uh, heading fast towards the east coast and uh, it's a big contrast to that sort of rugged heather hills and craggy rocks of the west. But the road that we've just turned onto is, uh, is again one of my <laughs> deviations um, because I've never cycled down here but I thought looking at the map that it would be a nice way to avoid the A9. And, um, you know, if we can find a beautiful route that links back to Inverness, still on the button in terms of 500 miles, and it does a, a loop of the north coast, um, oh, that would be uh, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, and you can tell by the amount of gravel down the middle that this is definitely a path less travelled. Right, well it feels like we've rejoined civilization slightly in that this is the A9. That also means, woohoo, we've reached another coast. That is the North Sea over there. We've got 4.9 k's of the A9 now and then Mark's stealth route has us going off to the right onto goodness knows what roads. But if they're half as good as the ones we've just been on, high fives all around. Almost makes me slightly forget the fact that I've got 190 kilometers left to go. Although. Probably about 160 if you minus the Black Isle. a mini milestone in my head at least of 120 k's to go so we've just stopped off to get a much needed brew and we've bumped into Jenny Graham who is the women's round the world record holder so astonishingly I have the women's round the world record holder on one side and the men's round the world record holder on the other so Jenny great to see you you did 124 days self-supported yeah so just carried everything I needed with me to fix myself fix my bike sleep at night yeah. So how does, how does training in the north of Scotland set you up for, I don't know, Russia and all the amazing places? Well, I actually thought, I thought, oh, nowhere is going to throw me after training in the highlands of Scotland. To be fair, that's what I Over think, Jenny. I, I was like, I agree. Was like, I knew it was going to be winter in Australia, but I was like, what, like, Australians don't know about winter. And oh my God, it, yeah, it absolutely had me. It was so cold out there oh. and so wet. And I was like, oh yeah, it's not just in the highlands. Wow. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, right, left turn. 120k to go. Come on! Yeah, I knew, man. That was some ride. It was huge. Yeah. Three day North Coast 500 with a twist. With a twist. One of genuinely the greatest rides I've ever done. So thank you very much for taking us round. We got lucky with the weather, but it's a beautiful route. Finished. I, finished I thought it was always like that. 
Yeah, well, finished with like a what, 40, 40 kilometer time trial in the dark. <laughs> Which was fun. Big thanks to Mark for taking us around the North Coast 500. Give this video a big thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and make sure you check out the video on the Tech Channel where I talk you through my bike and the kit that I've used for this.